Basically, a tackle looks something like this. <laughs> okay, so Buck just used the whole football strategy to basically pummel the guy that he had the beef with earlier. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today I'm reacting to episode one of Buck Rogers. Last week I reacted to the pilot episode. It was really funny, really enjoyed it. I, obviously, I got a lot of jokes this time round as an adult that I wouldn't have picked up as a kid. Quite inappropriate jokes for today's world, but I still enjoy them, they were funny. Buck Rogers is played by Jill Gerard. Uh, I looked up his name after the last episode. And as I said, he played it very like Roger Moore in the James Bond series that Roger Moore did. Very cheeky and cheesy and kitschy, which I guess is, you know, symbolic of the time period. Anyway, really looking forward to watching episode one, episode two, depends how you define it. I would call it episode one, given the other one was a pilot. And uh, yeah, let's get on and watch the show. This one is actually also an hour and a half long. Not sure why that is. Usually it's only the pilot that's an hour and a half long, but the second episode is as well, and then they go to an hour in length. But anyway, as I said, let's get on and watch the show. I cannot sing, so that's probably the obvious. Still a good theme tune. And the beautiful Aaron Gray. Planet of the Slave Girls. That is such a 70s title. A great 70s B movie title, actually. And Jack Palance. Jack Palance is in this. If you don't know who Jack Palance is, he was famous cowboy, cowboy actor. Space travel isn't what it used to be, is it? it? Used to take us days just to get to the moon. Now, if you blink at the wrong time, you miss it. Well, Buck, you'd be surprised to learn that in the year 2023, we haven't been to the moon in at least 50 years. And some people question if we ever went at all. I don't buy that, but there you go. <laughs> Okay, so these stargates are some sort of warp wormhole ability to be able to travel at, you know, vast distances in space. Don't make me open my mouth just yet, Wilma. Your system will get used to space warp travel once you've done it a few times. Buck is feeling a little travel sick. I'm picking up several director starfighters dead ahead. <laughs> and the radar looks like asteroids, if any of you remember that game from back in the day. Scout 3 to leader. I'm under attack by pirates. Those pesky pirates again. Shall we? After you. Hang on. Up to the rescue. Well, if they continue to use the Battlestar Galactica effects, as I believe they will, there'll be two laser shots to the left or the right, followed by a hit. Okay, that was wrong. Appreciate it all the more if next time you'd refrain from interfering in a director and training mission. What? Yeah, just let your pilot get shot up. Makes sense. I'd like to repeat that in the flight hangar. I'd love to. Exactly, don't mess with Buck, mate. Buck is gonna knock you clean out, man. I wonder do we always get a 70s fanfare when we come into Earth in the future? It'd be great if we did, wouldn't it? Are you alright? Of course not, he's wise as she. I'm afraid I don't feel very well, sir. Oh. It's hard to say, but I can see why that young guy didn't have a great acting career after this. <laughs> that wasn't exactly the pinnacle of Oscar winning performances. I was responding to a distress signal. From someone that you knew was in my command. That didn't seem to matter much to the pirates, did it? Exactly, Buck. This guy's a dick. And in my judgment, your cadet was in grave danger. I gave the okay to interfere. And Wilma outranks you guys, so tough. So you're Buck Rogers, huh? Since the day I was born. I like that. I'm going to use that expression going forward. So you're Jason. Yeah, since the day I was born, mate. I think um, our pilots would greatly benefit from a lecture in 20th century battle strategy. Great, but I still fail to see how Buck is training pilots of the future in military strategy. Surely they have access to all the military strategies of the past and would have developed a few more, a few new ones in the last 500 years, maybe, you would think. I don't know. Particularly after the whole nuclear war stuff. Dealing with space pirates. Dealing with the tiger people. What are they called? The draconians. From the last episode. She's some kind of woman, isn't she? She sure is, that book. I can't concentrate. I don't know what's wrong. 
I can't keep up. Well, that's more than PTSD just getting this guy. That much is obvious. The Computer Council has ordered that a definitive statement to the general public not be made just yet. But so far here in New Chicago, 25,000 cases have been reported. Oh, it's good to see government secrecy is alive and well in the future, keeping information from the public. Glad to see things haven't changed that much. It's its effect on our defense squadrons. But they've been hardest hit of all. You think it's happening purposely? Of course it's happening purposely, Wilma. They've, it's your defense personnel that are sick more than anyone else, so that seems pretty purposeful to me. Is it the Draconians again? Find an antidote. You've developed one. Not yet. We shall. It's like COVID all over again, 500 years into the future. Well, that source is right there. And what the hell is that? How can a contaminant get into our food? A food disc. Great. But Carl and I have developed a substance that will detect the poison. A food disc doesn't look really appetizing. What about the hundreds of directorate pilots that have already been poisoned? They seem to have been returned to a modicum of health, but not to full functioning ability. Great, so I it's defenseless, which was obviously the plan all along. In my day, we used the strategy of a popular sport called football to explain combat strategy. Okay, so Buck is going to use American football, because football in the rest of the world is soccer, as you uh, Yanks would call it. So he's going to use football strategy to teach the pilots of the future. In football, the quarterback is the brains of the operation. If you get him while he's still carrying the ball, your strategy works. Never got into American football, by the way. A huge rugby fan, rugby union. Played it as a kid. But yeah, it... it look, I don't know much about the game, so I'm probably not commenting from a place that warranted. But for me, rugby union is more exciting. The guys wear less gear. It's faster, less breaks, and just as physical. So I prefer it. But as I said, I haven't watched enough of American football to state that definitively. But if anyone wants to share their thoughts on why I should get into American football, let me know. Maybe I'll do a few videos on it, watch a few games, who knows. Basically, a tackle looks something like this. <laughs> okay, so Buck just used the whole football strategy to basically pummel the guy that he had the beef with earlier. I like it. Now. <laughs> well, fair play to the guy for not taking it. Of course you're going to hit back if you got anything about you, you know? Let me show you how you should have died. <sighs> so are these two just going to bash each other up throughout the whole training session? What in the world was that? <laughs> Sounded like Buck. Has Dr. Theo's voice changed since the very first episode? It seems like a different voice to me. I'm going to look that up afterwards because I'm recording with my phone. I think you've learned enough for one day. And I'd just like to thank you all for- I just say, uh, I was just thinking Tweaky walks a little bit like he was captured in the last episode by the mutants and turned into a sex robot. Just the way he walks, it looks uncomfortable. Looks like he's hurting down there. Oh, hi guys. Two grown men fighting. How disgusting. I wonder is Dr. Theo, the new guy with the new voice, still keen on Buck, the way he was in the first episode, in the pilot? He's not getting a little uncomfortable with the Rohit Null and everything. Please monitor his readouts till I get back. Oh, gladly, sir. It's about time you took a break. That's a very well coiffured and manicured uh, nurse. Let me guess, she's from the planet of the slave girls. Stella, I'm in danger. She's sabotaging you. Assistance, danger, I am in danger. This reminds me of Hal in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Too late, goodbye, Mallory. At least he got to say his goodbyes before he blew up. Okay, so Buck is getting it on with Wilma. Fair play, Buck. Didn't waste any time. Although, it is quite tight between Wilma and the princess. Okay, he's not getting it on. They're training. Who's this? Someone I knew a uh, long, long time ago. And pray tell, Buck, how did you manage to keep a photo of someone you knew a long time ago? Yes, Dr. Hewer, what's happened? Please. Just come down to the hospital research lab. Buck and Wilma to the rescue. They're going to investigate. They're going to go to the planet of the slave girls. And they're going to figure out why they're poisoning the food, which is probably the draconians. And they're going to put a stop to it. I'm calling it now. Oh, Buck. I'm sorry. But this deals directly with the defense directorate. And seeing as how you hesitate to become a member... You're out, Buck. It's a need-to-know basis, mate. We found that all the food discs manufactured for directorate housing were contaminated. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that confidentiality and uh, 
top secret clearance is taken so seriously in the future. All you know they're doing is walking to the corner, bucking over here, everything. So yeah, great protection. One thing in common, Vistula. What's Vistula? It's the planet of the slave girls. Oh my god, Buck, how did you overhear a top secret conversation that you weren't meant to hear? Because you literally stood right there and I'm literally three feet away. Vistula 2, this is Warden. Do you read me? Told you she was on the planet of the slave girls. She was too coiffured and manicured. Your moment is at hand! Jack Palance. Work to feed the people of distant planets. While your own sons and daughters go hungry. So he's leading a revolt. Workers unite. The only ones who can stop us, who are weak and faithless, those who do not believe. Exactly. Get them out. Root them out. Kill them. Burn them. Jack Palance is hamming this up, by the way. Something brilliantly. I know of one. Leila, no. My husband. Yes, inform. Root them out, inform! Save time on a divorce, get rid of the husband by informing on him. Wait, not for everyone else, for himself. How dare he! Root him out, burn him! Well, what's this thing of the glowing hands? You have nothing to fear. He's gonna burn him, I'm telling you, glowing hands, he's gonna burn him. That's what you do with informers, you root them out and you burn them in the future. When you're unionizing. So he's got the touch of death. His hands low, he touches you, you're dead. Handy trick. Khalil! Khalil! That's it, I'm converted. I'm now a member. Put me in the planet of the slave girls. There's only one Khalil. And I serve him now too. You've heard from Stella? She'll be landing shortly. She says Earth's Defense Directorate stands little chance of curing its ailing pilots until well after we've launched our attack. Earth seems to have pissed off everybody. The Draconians, the Planet of the Slave Girls. Why? What are they doing? If you're referring to Dr. Hewer, Stella indicated he's about to be taken care of. Oh, so they not only got Carl, they're coming after Dr. Hewer as well. He's not having a good day. Beware the triangular metal thing. Which contains a disco ball grenade. Oh no, it's a liquid. That's creating ice and smoke for the disco ball grenade bottle thing. And suggest that Regis be returned to Vistula to recuperate there. Bob senses what's going on. He's the man. So this is a space ninja that for some reason had to pour out a smoke thing. Get out! Don't either one of you raise even a hair. Laser boomerang! I love it, but I still don't get the whole bottle smoke thing. Good. Maybe they should have made it silent. That way you would have a better chance of hitting your targets before they heard the sound and ducked. Come on, Buck! Get the Space Ninja, man! <laughs> Duck! You heard the sound of the boomerang! Big flaw! Big flaw, Space Ninja! <laughs> yeah, one of the fatal flaws of uh, a laser boomerang is it gets stuck. And again, I still don't understand why she poured out, or he poured out that liquid stuff to generate the smoke like acid. That's better than a graduation gift. Thank you, Tweaky. Anytime, Buck. <laughs> the way Tweaky says Buck, it's always like he's going to say the other word which begins with an F. Is it just me? Let me know in the comments, guys. Now, I will say just one bit of social commentary here, which is probably not relevant, but I'm going to say it anyway. So we get a lot of stuff today about, oh, you need female leads, oh, you need strong female characters, oh, you need people with different diverse backgrounds. All fair points, right? But the difference is, back then, they were already doing it in the 70s. So what's all the fuss today about? Here we have a black woman, here we have a white woman, here we have a white guy. They all pretty much seem to have a strong role in, in this episode, so what's all the hoo-ha about today? And to be honest, 
even if you look at other series like Battlestar Galactica, one of the main characters was Colonel Ty, who's black. So what's what's the problem? We'll be going to the place where the food is warehoused and processed for shipment to Earth. Now what's that barren area? It's a huge desert. Vistula's first inhabitants called it the Sea of Stone. So obviously in the Sea of Stone is where Khalil is, and his group is going to be hanging out, I presume. Of course, big cave in the desert. See, told you. Could very well be that he knows the poison food comes from Vistula and he sent these people here as spies. He does. And that is why they're here. And should they stray too near the fire, we'll simply see that it engulfs them. Jack Palance is having a lot of fun with this character, you can tell. He's definitely all right in the pudding in terms of the acting. We virtually have a human workforce. Look at that tips. All your operations are carried out by people. I didn't know that was possible. And I presume profitable, and I presume they're slaves. And that's why Khalil is revolting with his group. A man called Khalil. He periodically gathers a group of them together and sells them to us. Sorry, he's the slave owner and Khalil is the slave trader. So if Khalil is the slave trader, why are people supporting him? Surely they'd be revolting against him as well. You treat these people as if they're machines. They're not. They're human beings. They make mistakes. Very interesting notion. Okay, so obviously this guy, this governor, is supposed to be a reflection of a Barbary pirate or the Ottoman Emperor with all his slaves. But well, that's what I think anyway. Let me know if you disagree in the comments, guys. Strangers in the night, exchanging glances, wandering in the night. Buck is enjoying himself in the bath with a good old sing song, why not? Prima's changed the music to something more disco-y. So is Prima going to get funky with Buck in the bath? Is that her job? Ah oh, no, she's going to dish the dirt. I'd like to thank you for what you did tonight at the banquet. Yeah, no problem. It's good to know that of all the music genres, disco survives 500 years into the future. Everything else is dead, but disco lives. Hey, let me get out of here. I'm starting to wrinkle. <laughs> I'm sure you are starting to wrinkle, Buck. Buck's not a shy man, that much we can tell. Khalil feeds off the adulation of a crowd. He siphons off their love and their energy. Sorcerer, mutant, call him what you will. Okay, that's an interesting theory, because there is a conspiracy theory, yet again, I'm going to quote it, that the writers, which is Glenn A. Larson, who did weave a lot of Mormon uh, theology and lore into his uh, writings, there is a conspiracy theory that aliens feed off Lush, and Lush is kind of energy that humans generate. Which is essentially what you just said Khalil does. He gets the crowd worked up to adore him and then he can suck up that energy to use these powers, the big glowing hand things and the touch of that. Oh, well, um, I'll leave by the window. You stay here. I've got a reputation to uphold too, you know. So Prima was sent to be Buck's concubine for the night. Fair bag, Buck. Fair play, Buck. You're a gentleman. I didn't see any windows though, so I don't know how he's going to leave through the window, but, but you know, ignore those little plot holes. <laughs> That's it. Quick duck around, Buck. The one thing that I'm still confused about is how did Buck become a skilled spy if, in fact, he was an astronaut? That bit's never explained. But I don't, again, I don't think it's necessary to this story. Just a little another plot hole we ignore. Yeah, what's in the box? Is it a poison food? Some more 80s action fighting. The kick to the chest, the slap across the face, the roll down the stairs, the leap in the air. And the throwing off the rail, another 80s classic action fight throw. And Buck just takes out eight guys, no issue. And they all fall with one kick, one punch. But he's managed to get away and he's discovered the secret. That's what's important. The poisoning is in the food packaging. Oh, I see. And so he left through the window. Again, if he left through the window, I see no window. Everyone keeps talking about these windows. Where are they? No, don't bother. We'll take her back to the mountain. Khalil will make her talk. Okay, so the second in command to the governor is working for Khalil. Is the governor? 
Will Mill rescuer, not to worry, guys.